Hello, welcome to evening prayer. Um, For October the 11th. Let us pray together. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. She needs to speak into the mic a little. Almighty and most merciful, merciful Father, Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent according to your promises to that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Grant to your faithful people, merciful Lord, pardon and peace, that we may be, may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There you go. Stay at it. Okay, go ahead. O Keep. Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy okay. Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, now and, and ever, ever shall be, world without end. end. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O, o gladsome light, pure, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, holy and blessed, now has we come to say it, of the standing of the sun, and, and our eyes behold the vesper light. We sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Our psalm today, oops. Our psalms for today begin with Psalm 59. I will start us off. Deliver me from my enemies, O God. Defend me from those who rise up against me. O oh, deliver me from the evildoers, and, and save me from, from the bloodthirsty. For behold, they lie in wait for my soul. The mighty are gathered against me without any offense or fault of mine, O oh Lord. They run and prepare themselves without cause. Arise, therefore, to help me, and behold. Rise up, O Lord God of hosts, O God of Israel, to visit all the nations, and be not merciful to those who offend with malicious wickedness. They go to and fro in the evening. They howl like dogs and run about through the city. Behold, they boast with their mouths, and taunts are on their lips. For they say, Who will hear us? But you, O Lord, shall hold them in derision, and you shall laugh all the nations to scorn. My strength I will ascribe unto you, for you are the God of my refuge. God shows me his plenteous goodness, and God shall let me look in triumph upon my enemies. Slay them not, lest my people forget it, but scatter them abroad by your might and put them down, O Lord, our shield. For the sin of their mouth and for the hope and for the words of their lips they shall be taken in their pride, because their talk is cursing and lies. Consume them in your wrath, consume them that they may perish, and know that it is God who rules in Jacob and unto the ends of the world. In the evening they will return, howl like dogs and run about through the city, they will run here and there, don't touch them. They will run here and there for meat and growl if they are not satisfied. As for me, I will sing of your power and will praise your mercy early in the morning, for you have been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble. Unto you, O oh my strength, will I sing, for you, O oh God, are my refuge and my merciful God. Psalm 60. O oh God, you have cast us out and scattered us abroad. You have been so displeased, O oh, turn unto us again. You have made the land up to quake and divided it. Heal the branches, for it shakes. You have made your people to drink a cup of bitterness. You have filled us up with the wine that makes us stagger. You have set up a banner for those who fear you. That they may triumph because of the truth. That your beloved may be delivered. Help me with your right hand and hear me. God has spoken in his holiness. I will rejoice and divide Shechem and parcel out, parcel out. Parcel out of the valley of Succoth. 
Gilead is mine, and Manasseh is mine. Ephraim is also the helmet for my head. Judah is my scepter. Moab is my washpot. On Edom will I cast my shoe. Over Felicia will I, will I shout in triumph. Who will lead me into the strong city? Who will bring me into Edom? Have you not cast us out, O God? Will you not, O God, go out with our armies? O be our help in trouble. For vain is the help of man. Through God we will do great acts. For it is he who shall tread down our enemies. Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O God. Give ear, give ear unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth I will call upon you. When my heart is in heaviness. O oh, set me upon the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge and a strong tower for me against the enemy. Let me dwell in your tabernacle forever. And my refuge shall be under the covering of your wings. For you, O oh God, have heard my vows. And have given a heritage to those who fear your name. You shall grant the king a long life. That his years may endure throughout all generations. His throne shall abide before God forever. So, O oh, prepare your loving mercy and faithfulness, that they may preserve him. So will I always sing praise unto your name. That I I may daily perform my vows. Glory, Glory be, be to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I do this, but... Our first reading, it's the 11th, right? Yes. Is Second Maccabees 6. I'm going to need to copy... Uh, this Bible doesn't have the book, so I'm going to use yours. Yeah. Not long after this, the king sent an... Athenian senator to compel the Jews to forsake the laws of their fathers and to cease to live by God's law, and also to pollute the temple in Jerusalem and call it the temple of Olympian Zeus, and to call the one in Gerizim the temple of Zeus, the friend of strangers, as did the people who dwelt in that place. Harsh and utterly grievous was the onslaught of evil, for the temple was filled with debauchery and reviling, or in reveling by the Gentiles who dallied with harlots. Please stop, Augie. Please stop, put your name and had intercourse with women within the sacred precincts, and, bes and besides brought it in things for sacrifice that were unfit. The altar was covered with abominable offerings, which were forbidden by the laws. A man could neither keep the Sabbath, nor observe the feast of his fathers, nor so much as confess himself to be a Jew. On the monthly celebration of the king's birthday, the Jews were taken under bitter constraint to partake of the sacrifices. And when the feast of Dionysus came, they were compelled to walk in the procession in honor of Dionysus wearing wreaths of ivy. At the suggestion of Ptolemy, a decree was issued to the neighboring Greek cities that they should adopt the same policy toward the Jews and make them partake of the sacrifices and should slay those who did not choose to, over, to change over to Greek customs. One could see, therefore, the misery that had come upon them. For example, two women were brought in for having circumcised their children. These women publicly paraded about the city with their babies hung at their breasts, then hurled them down headlong from the wall. Others who had assembled in the caves nearby to observe the seventh day secretly were betrayed to Philip and were all burned together because their piety kept them from defending themselves in view of their regard for that most holy day. Now I urge those who read this book not to be depressed by such calamities but to recognize that these punishments were designed not to destroy, but to discipline our people. In fact, not to, let them Im not to let the impious alone for so long, but to punish them immediately is a sign of great kindness. For in the case of the other nations, the Lord waits patiently to punish them until they have reached the full measure of their sins. But he does not deal in this way with us, in order that he may not take vengeance on us afterward when our sins have reached their height. Therefore, he never withdraws his mercy from us. Though he disciplines us with calamities, he does not forsake his own people. Let what we have said serve as a reminder. We must go on briefly with the story. Eleazar, one of the scribes in a high position, a man now advanced in age and of noble presence, was being forced to open his mouth to eat swine's flesh. But he, welcoming death with honor rather than life with pollution, went up to the rack of his own accord, spitting out the flesh as men ought to go, who have the courage to refuse things that it is not right to taste even for the natural love of life. Those who were in charge of that unlawful sacrifice took the man aside because of their long acquaintance with him and privately urged him to bring meat of his own, providing 
proper for him to use and pretend that he was eating the flesh of the sacrificial meal which had been commanded by the king, so that by doing this he might be saved from death and treated kindly on account of his old friendship with him. But making a high resolve worthy of his years and dignity of his old age and the gray hairs which he had reached with distinction and his excellent life even from childhood, and moreover, according to the glory, the holy God-given law, he declared himself quickly, telling them to send him to Hades. Such pretense is not worthy of our time of life, he said, lest many of the young should suppose that Eleazar, in his nineteenth year, has gone over to an alien religion, and through my pretense, for the sake of living a brief moment longer, they should be led astray because of me, while I defile and disgrace my old age. For even if for the present I should avoid the punishment of men, yet whether I live or die I shall not escape the hands of the Almighty. Therefore, by manfully giving up my life now, I will show myself worthy of my old age, and lead to the young a noble example of how to die a good death willingly and nobly for the revered and holy laws. When he had said this, he went at once to the rack, and those who a little before had acted toward him with good will now changed to ill will because the words he had uttered were in their opinion sheer madness when he was about to die under the blows he groaned aloud and said it is clear to the lord in his holy knowledge that though i might be saved from death i am enduring terrible sufferings in my body under this beating but in my soul i am glad to suffer these things because i fear him so in this way he died leaving in his death an example of nobility and a memorial of courage, not only to the young, but to the great body of his nation. Here ends the reading. Lead us. Let's say the Magnificat. My soul, soul magnifies, magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices, rejoices in God my Savior, for he has regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden, for behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For he that is mighty has magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him throughout all generations. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones, and has exalted the humble and meek. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, has helped his servant Israel, as he has promised to our fathers Abraham and his seed forever and ever. No, I mean forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning in the 27th chapter in the first verse. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And they bound him and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate the governor. Then when Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he changed his mind and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? See, do it yourself. And throwing down the pieces of silver into the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since it is blood money. So they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field as a burial place for strangers. Therefore that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken by the prophet Jeremiah, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him on whom a of him on whom a price had been set by some of the sons of Israel, and they gave for them a, and they gave them for the potter's field as the Lord directed me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, "Are you the king of the Jews?" Jesus said, "You have said so." But when, but when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate said to him, "Do you not hear how many things they testify against you?" But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to release for the crowd any one prisoner whom they wanted. And they had, when it, then, a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had delivered him up. 
Besides, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with the righteous man, for I have suffered much because of him today in a dream. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to destroy Jesus. And the, go the governor again said to them, Which of the two of do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus who is called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. And he said, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Jesus saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And all the people answered, His blood be on us and on our children. Then he released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go ahead. Okay. Speak into it, though. Lord, now and let, let your, your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let's just stay seated because of where we are. I believe in God, the, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Nice and loud. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us. And lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people. And bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And take not your Holy Spirit from us. O God, our refuge and strength, true source of all godliness, graciously hear the devout prayers of your church and grant that those things which we ask faithfully we may obtain effectually through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you called your servant Philip to preach the gospel. Raise up in this land evangelists and heralds of your kingdom, that your church may proclaim the unsearchable riches of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Light in our darkness, we beseech you, O Lord, and by your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. O God, you manifest in your servants the signs of your presence. Send forth upon us the spirit of love and in companionship. Now that your abounding grace may increase among us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Intercession is intercession. Pray for our huddle tonight. Yeah. Pray that it would go well. Mm -hmm. Pray for health, for our church, for our family. Pray that I would start eating a little more than I have. Mm. 
Jesus Christ. Let's close with the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised to your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us. Grant us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Have a great day.